Jams, jams, jams. Picture books and jams. Welcome, everybody, to PB Jams. Music and picture books. What a perfect sandwich. Squish them all together. What a yummy snack. Well, good morning or afternoon or evening or whatever time of day it is. You guys are coming to hang out and catch up with PB Jams. We are super excited that you are here today. <laughs> and I'm here with Ellen Leventhal, who is the author of Debbie's Song. And she is going to be sharing some inside scoops and tips um, with us today about that book and the musical connection. So welcome, Ellen. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is great um yeah lots so, of fun yeah so we, do you want ask questions or yes yes let's just, chat a little bit about um just about how debbie's song came to be tell us about the inspiration and maybe the writing process ah uh, yeah <laughs> the inspiration um I would say I don't know why it took me so long to write this book. I don't mean once I decided how long. That we'll talk about in a minute. But um, when I was teaching in a Jewish day school, they they were always singing Debbie Friedman's songs. And I loved her song. She had she lived, she would have been my age now. So a lot of our musical background was um, Peter, Paul, and Mary, all of the old uh, folk songs. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so I really felt drawn to her. Mm -hmm. The songs that she would sing or that she wrote and sang and then our kids sang were very inclusive. They were, um, some of them had more religion I'm going to kind of quote that um because she would write about um let me see one of my favorite songs that she did that has to do with uh Passover actually is the story that I think everybody knows it's certainly not just a Jewish story but um you know the Israelites going out of Egypt and Moses you know leading them and the parting of the Red Sea and all of that yeah. Well, Moses had a sister named Miriam mm -hmm. and Miriam had a pretty big role in that. Yeah. And one thing that Debbie Friedman did is that I'm going to kind of hold up the book in case people want to see it. It's beautiful. And um, I had nothing to do with the illustrations, so I can say they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, <laughs> they're very different. But um, so Debbie wrote this song uh, called Miriam's Song and talk about the music connection. You don't want to hear me singing, but it's about how the women sang. They had their timbrels and they were singing and that helped get the people there and ready and uh, across the Red Sea. And um, that's one thing that Debbie did. She would find these Bible stories or anything and, and include people. And it wasn't just women. So I just always loved her songs. And um, I met her once oh. briefly, but she lived it. She didn't grow up in Houston, but she lived in Houston for a few years and many people I know knew her well. Mm -hmm. And what they talked about was the fact that she actually had these services. And again, it's not just Jewish. And it's, it's, it's I know in many um, Christian faiths, it's the same thing. But she would have these services that she basically called healing services. Because it was singing and it was... Um, community and that's what she wanted so it, she actually taught music at the school that I taught at but before I was there gotcha so anyway oh we just we just sang them all the time 
And then I started working part-time at the school and I heard some music coming out of the music room and it was one of the Debbie Friedman songs. And I thought, I haven't heard her songs, music lately. And these kids have no idea who she is. Well, she, um, she unfortunately passed away right before she was 60. And I thought, these kids need to find, hear about her. Mm -hmm. Because getting back to the Houston connection, um, she would come to Houston way after she lived here and just be with people who needed her. And it didn't matter that she had, she was very sick herself. She had a neurological issues where she was in pain quite a bit, but that didn't stop her. And so she would be here and, you know, just her, her voice, her, her, there's, there's a Hebrew word called neshema, meaning her soul. She had a beautiful, what was called a neshema, her beautiful soul, mm -hmm. who would include everybody, mm -hmm. Jews, Christians, Muslims, men, women. She believed in the healing power of people and song. And uh, so I just like, okay, this is crazy. Why don't we sing more of her songs? And so I was working part-time and I would ask the kids if they knew who she was. No. And I'd sing, which was not so good, a few of her kid type kid songs. And they'd say, oh yeah, yeah, I, we know her. So I went home and I decided there needs to be a picture book about her. and picture book biographies were getting pretty popular. Yeah. So I went online and found her sister, contacted her sister and asked if I, I, I basically got her permission or really her blessing to do this book. Yeah. And so I was able to, I, I wouldn't have felt right doing it without that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my inspiration was just hearing her songs again. Yeah. And they're beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. Awesome. So did, did the sister, did you get to like interview her and talk to her about, about Debbie? Yeah, a lot. And I spoke to other people here who, who knew her and other places I was able to talk. And there were some discrepancies on details but I put that in the book in the author's note um and, uh, okay and this I think was important when you're writing biographies that are supposed to be factual and right. you have to check every fact but a lot of this came from people's memories I mean, there were certainly things that I, I was able to get. But even that, there's sometimes you have one person says that. Yeah. So what I wrote is talking to people about their memories of Debbie connected me to her. Everyone took Debbie into their hearts in their own way. But her love of music and people shone through each interview. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, does that make sense that some people said, oh, no, she did this. And this one said, no, she did this. But, but finding that common still, element. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone had that common thread. Right. And that's how I decide. There's another picture book about her out. And she took another another way to do it. Hmm. I um, The thread that's coming through here is that she had a dream of making community right and that was really important to her and it started that one day um in her synagogue and she I hate to say this but she was bored yeah and she you know when it happens all over and she wondered where the joy was mm -hmm. she wanted joy in her worship mm -hmm. and she had been singing her whole life. As I write in the book, I said it, it was her superpower. And she always had notes and melodies and words popping out. Yeah. Um, 
and she realized her parents and her grandparents, um, she would say they worked on healing the world. They, they did good deeds and she wanted to do that. And she thought, I have this music bouncing around inside me wanting to come out. I'm going to use music to create a community where everyone feels welcome. And she had a lot of pushback, you know, this is the way it's always been. And you're a woman and believe it or not, she could not read music. She was self-taught. She did that. Mm -hmm. So all of that made me think, this is really, I learned so much through the research project process, sure. of course. Yeah. Um. And I thought she needs, she's a role model on how to go for your dreams, take what your gift is. And, you know, clearly my gift is not writing music and singing, but I can put new words to music. That's right. Um, but to take your gift and do something that helps the world, that helps other people. And um, I'm excited with how it turned out, you know? Yeah, a theme that I really noticed when I was reading through it both times, and then I heard you say it just now about her, was that that never stopped her. Like, she couldn't read yeah. That didn't stop her. She couldn't do this, but that didn't stop her. So I think another yeah. thing that really shines through is her perseverance and her persistence. Right. And after, uh, through the persecution that you were just talking about, about, you know, you're a woman and you okay. can't, and, you know, this is not how it's always been done. And just really having to push through all of that. And when you talk about role model, like, yeah, yeah for sure, you know? Yeah. You know, um, when I spoke to her sister, she said, I want little girls to know that they can do this. And I said, absolutely. I want little boys to know they can do it too. Right. But, but she was, um, her being a woman, just a woman, but a woman with new ideas. And, uh, you know, I think we all run across that. Well, that's just not the way we do this. This is not music for synagogue or this, you know, it just happens. Um, but it was never for herself. And that's what I want to get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And talk to us about the writing process. So from like from rough draft to, I know obviously a lot of research went into this so from research to rough draft to final copy, a, a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, and if I can just squeeze here, let's see. Yeah, says Debbie. Um, wow. For a 32 page picture book. <laughs> Yeah. So a lot of this is, um, some of this is research, not that much, but um, a lot of it are the critiques. Uh -huh. I chose different ways to tell the story. Uh -huh. um, and there wasn't that much new. So I had to really tell this story but in order to get it very kid-like I wanted to use words and actions that the that the kids could relate to uh many 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 drafts I'm sure but here's an interesting thing um I sent it to a publisher they said they really liked my writing they're just not sure about the way I chose to tell the story. But they gave me a few more chances and they ultimately passed but said, you know, send things. We like your writing. This is just not the way we want this story to be told. Yep. It's fair. Uh -huh. That day, I sent it to a different publisher who within a few weeks said, oh, I, I've gotten lots of um, submissions 
on Debbie Friedman, oh. but we love the way you chose to tell the story. So it's so subjective. Now, the other publisher did get another really good story who told her, just told the story differently. Right. right. So if you're writers out there, don't get discouraged. It's there's so much is, it's just so subjective often. Yeah, it yeah. really is. And then, of course, there was more revision after that, but not a lot at that point. So once uh, the publisher got hold of it, it was it was just a little bit of tweaking from that point. Yeah, yeah. And we were able to speak with um, Debbie's sister. So we got a lot of, um, you know, some real pictures. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely cool. So you've talked a lot about the musical connections. Would is there anywhere you'd like to elaborate more on the musical connections in the story? Um, really, I, just not really. It was just that she, you know, I really do believe we all have our own gifts, and some we develop, and some we don't. But she had this in her all the time and she then like as I said she used it you know what is it I've seen movies like you like from the Star Wars use it for good yeah yeah absolutely and but um no this was you know the the story is it's more than some musical connections it's yeah. it's about <laughs> the music. whole thing yeah yeah the whole thing yeah it is and uh yeah. And I, I love how you talk about music kind of being her superpower. You mentioned that earlier <clears throat> and you say yeah. that book. And I love that line um, as a music teacher. I love that line as a musician mm -hmm. and, a, and a person who just loves music. That that line just really speaks to me. But talk about um, music in your own life. Is it I know you said you're not like you're, you don't enjoy sing or you don't feel like you're a good singer, maybe. Um but yeah but it doesn't music. stop me <laughs> <laughs> and that never stopped her <laughs> there it is again <laughs> right yeah um I love that <laughs> no, I love music um and again being the same age that Debbie would have I mean I just I think I grew up with the best music ever <laughs> you know 60s music but uh Somebody asked me in, in an interview where I was just writing it, what my favorite song is. I said, no, <laughs> you know, it depends <laughs> on my mood. <laughs> but I think that music, at least for me, absolutely is, brings feelings and emotions and, um, I, I, you know, it's probably with everybody, but music will bring back memories. And it's funny how I might not remember what I had for dinner yesterday, but if I hear a certain song, I said, I remember I was at the beach in New Jersey and I was doing that. And then, of course, you all, you know, I, I can you put on a Beatles song and I'll know every word. Right. <laughs> music is it's always really been important to me. It's always been a favorite. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I must've had a decent voice because like in um, middle school, I was in the choir and I just loved her music teacher. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a very, I'd be very sad if, if I didn't have access to music and um you know, big proponent of music in the schools, yeah. art in the schools, yeah. whether it's, you know, visual arts and music or writing. Um, yeah, I, I'm <laughs> obviously you feel that way too. Of course. Yeah. It. And I'm so thankful for music teachers who really can um, instill a love of it in kids. Yeah. And so, I yeah. think part of, you know, part of the beauty of books like yours is that it gives us as teachers, 
an opportunity to introduce them to music that we maybe wouldn't have, you know, yeah. um, you know, and I, I love that. Like I've been trying to introduce my students to a new genre, at least one new genre of music every year that they might not get a chance to hear. And so we, we did bluegrass, you know, last year and like, oh, a lot of, yeah, it really was fun and they loved it. And I think if you give kids an opportunity, they're going to enjoy most styles of music. If you, if you don't tell them ahead of time that they're not going to love it. And we've had that too. Like I did a, a unit on rap and hip hop. And a lot of my kids were like, mm -hmm. you know, we're in the conservative South. Right. And so a lot of my kids were like, my mm -hmm. mom won't let me listen to rap. And I said, but I'm, I'm making sure that this rap is, is good and wholesome and there's no ugly words and there's no, you know, like, um, cause I teach K2. Right. And so, you know, uh, the beauty of, and, and there was a couple of books that I integrated into, you know, Carol Boston Weatherford and um, one, uh, of, one of her books. And, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And just a couple of really nice books that, that brought that together. And the, and the beauty of those books and books like yours is that allows us to see mm -hmm. inside another culture um, and to hear yeah. music from another culture, which is super important. And that's, and that's important I mean I taught it happened to be at a Jewish day school which was my last job I mean I I worked other places but that was when I did special ed and we did oh boy music with special ed kids such a vehicle so important so so important yeah. but um yeah we always brought in all different cultures and just as I would with with reading you know yeah. and yeah it's, uh and yeah. that's the whole purpose of PB Jams is bringing that reading and that music together and finding these books that have these musical connections in that way. Mm -hmm. They're, they're great books yeah. for classroom teachers. They're great books for families. They're great books for music teachers. And there's so many different ways that you can yeah. and use them. And music just, I think, builds such a sense as you were talking about of community of people coming together. Mm -hmm. Like you can't stand around the campfire that Debbie was talking about and not be yeah. united. You can't stand around a campfire and sing songs together and not be connected on some very basic human level. You know, you can't sit in a classroom and sing songs together without there being some human basic connection. And yeah. so I think from that perspective of hers, like that's really powerful. Yeah. I, I, and also, as you were saying, with connections, even with people you don't know. So you're at a concert, you know, and if it's a concert you chose to go to, other people are there and you're just like smiling. And we and it to me, it's amazing that. So here I'm singing a song that I knew when I was 13. You lived on the other side of the country. And you're singing that same song too. And we're having our own memories, but there's still that connection. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's so fun and so yeah. beautiful. Well, talk to us, Ellen, about what's coming up next for you. What do you have coming down the pipeline? What can we look for? Well, right now there's nothing in the pipeline, but there are a lot of um a lot of things in my computer and in my drawer. <laughs> I, I'm not stopping. I'm hoping something gets published, but you know, it takes, it takes a while. It um, is for my last book before this, a flood of kindness. Um, I had an agent, but she was just a, a one project agent. So now I'm agentless again, and I have to do all that querying and things like that. But yeah, I have a, I have a lot of different things going on. Awesome. And hopefully there'll be something in the next few years. Yes, that sounds great. Yeah. I hope. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we know this business is super slow and it, it takes a while. Uh -huh. And yeah, but it's it's worth it when it when you get to hold that book in your hands. It all Yeah. Feels and and then be with the kids, you know, it's just, um, you know, it, it, it's hard. And like you said, a lot of, um, your audience writers and people always say, well, what, what advice do you have for them? 
So my newest advice, even though you didn't ask, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Is is something that I learned the hard way because it's so difficult. We sometimes get so caught up in, I want to do what this agent's looking for, what this publisher wants. And sometimes it, it's happened to me. You're so caught up in the business of publication. It kind of can suck the joy out of it. So you you need to step back sometimes. And I'm not good at it but I know it's important. <laughs> you need to step back and remember the joy of writing and the joy of storytelling. And if you do nonfiction or all, even fiction, there's research mm -hmm. and not think ahead or not necessarily write to the trends. Um, you know, everyone tells me, oh, you know, you should learn how to do graphic novels. Well, yeah, because they're off the charts. Everybody loves them. I tried doing it, and I personally did not enjoy that style of writing. Right. Um, and I said, I've got to do it. I've got, and I said, no, I need to do something that brings me joy. Right. So well, it goes back, I think, to what you were saying and, mm -hmm. and what Debbie said, that we use our gifts, and we don't all have the same gifts. And yeah. what's good, what's good and easy and fun for me and brings me joy is not going to be the same thing that is fun and brings you joy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, but sometimes it's, I do believe that you have to step back and maybe just write for fun. And I'm not saying don't have your eye on the prize. I mean, don't take it off, but if that's all it is, um, I think that's, that's where you get in trouble. And I think that's the thing with every job. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When it's not fun anymore, you, you need to take a step back and see how can I, how can I shift or change how I'm approaching it so that I can find that joy again? That's very true. Whether you're talking about teaching yeah. or, or music, or, I mean, that's basically yeah, Debbie's anything. motivation was sitting in synagogue and going, there where's the joy in this like this is not this yeah. is not inspiring anybody <laughs> no, like everybody's you know just sitting here and not nobody seems to be enjoying this but we should be enjoying it and recognizing recognizing where there should be joy and there's not I think is like a yeah. huge stepping stone to a radical shift in in your life and in your in your heart and in your mind yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so I'm you know, hopefully I'll have something published in the next few years. I have some things out, but I can't, I can't just worry about that. I That's have to right. enjoy being with my critique partners. I have to, I'm not saying enjoy like, oh, it's so much fun all the time, but right. don't let it just suck the life out of you. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Finding that, finding that joy and writing for the sheer joy of it. And, and then hopefully, you know, I think that comes through in our writing when we write about things that do bring us joy, you know, that's going to be yeah. a much more pleasant read for somebody because that's going to come through in our, in our writing. And I mean, I think that heart shines through for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's what we aim for. That's you right. Know, that's, that's right. That's what we aim for. We have to try. Yes. Well, I have no it's doubt that fun. we will see, yeah, we'll be seeing more from Ellen. So you guys keep your eyes open and keep in touch <laughs> with her. Um, down below, I'm going to be linking up all her socials and where you can get your very own copy of Debbie's song and share it with your family, your students, um, or your music students, or whoever you would like to share it with. Um, books make great gifts, and we often talk about ways you can support the authors. And so not only buying her book, but if you could request it from the library um, near you, your bookstores locally, um, also doing reviews on Amazon and Goodreads are great ways. And uh, um, yeah, sharing it out on social media and just word of mouth is a great way to say, you know, I read this great book and it made me think of you and you need to check this out. I mean, we're doing that all the time, you know, sending out recommendations to 
to our friends. And so do that, you know, take a look at the book, check it out, buy a copy, pass it along to somebody, put it in a little free library. I mean, those are great places um, to share the love of books too. Anything you want to add to that, Ellen? No, just thank you so much. And um, I really appreciate being here. And let's just, as I write in the books now, let's sing our own songs. That's right. We all have our own songs. So let's do that. That's a great way to end PB Jammers. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Thank Thank you. You're the best. Yes, we will keep singing and I will see you guys next time for PB Jams. Thanks for being here. PB Jams, yummy books and music. PB Jams, reading, writing, teaching. PB Jams, what a yummy treat. Jamming PBs all the time. PB Jams, 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 jams. Picture books and jams. We'll see you next time.